inside this lesson, we're going to take a look at what are called solution sets for our linear systems. Essentially, a solution set is a collection of values that satisfies every single linear equation inside our linear system. When we solve our linear system, there's three different possibilities we might get for our solution set. The first possibility is what we call a unique solution. And the easiest way to think about unique solution is that there's only one value for each variable. The second type of solution we might get is called an infinite solution. And how I like to think about an infinite solution is that at least one of our variables is allowed to have many values. And the last kind of solution set we might get is no solution. And in this case, we're unable to find a set of values that are going to satisfy every single linear equation at the same time. We may be able to find values that work for one or two or many of the linear equations, but not all of them are going to be satisfied in that linear system. And unfortunately, the labeling does not stop there. There's two other words that we also commonly use to talk about linear systems. And those words are consistent and inconsistent. Consistent really just means that the linear system has a solution. And this can happen in one of two ways. Either it has a unique solution or it has an infinite solution. The second label, inconsistent, means that the linear system does not have a solution. So we only ever label a linear system inconsistent if we know that it has no solution. So let's take a look at what the reduced row echelon form of a unique solution might actually look like. Okay, so we know that given this matrix here, we can transfer it back into a linear system. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's read row number one. If we assume that the variables are x and y, row number one says x plus zero y's equals to three. If we take a look at row 2, row 2 says 0x's plus 1y equals to negative 2. And finally, if we look at row 3, row 3 says 0x's plus 0y's is equal to 0. So let's take a look at that statement down here at the bottom. 0x plus 0y, well that's just 0. So the last row really reads 0 equals 0. And this is a true mathematical statement. Usually what we do in these cases is we ignore row 3 because it doesn't give us any false information. So what do we have? We have that x is equal to 3 and y is equal to minus 2. We call this a unique solution because each variable has only one value that's associated with it. So we can go ahead and we can actually write down what the solution set looks like. It's x equals 3, y equals minus 2. And like I said before, we call this a unique solution. And furthermore, we can label our original linear system, we would label our original linear system as consistent. That's because we have a solution. So let's take a look at a case where we're going to have no solution. First, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this linear system into an augmented matrix. Now that we have our augmented matrix, our goal is to try to reduce this augmented matrix into reduced row echelon form. Once we get to our REF, then we can determine what kind of solution set we're going to have for our linear system. Notice that we already have a leading one in the upper left-hand corner, so we want to utilize that leading one to create zeros below. The first operation that's going to help us do that is row two minus two row ones. I've gone ahead and I've done that elementary row operation. If you need to review your elementary row operations, please go back and take a look at some of our previous lessons. The next operation we want to do is row three minus row one. So here is the new augmented matrix that we get after performing that last elementary row operation. And we can check and confirm that the first column is complete. We have our leading one and we have zeros beneath our leading one. When we move over to column two, something interesting happens here that hasn't happened before. 
The next leading one we would want to put here, but the only non-zero number is in row 1. We can't move this number down, otherwise this leading one is going to be affected. So what we have to do in this case is skip over column 2 and go right into column 3. And our next candidate for a leading one is going to be here, below and to the right of the first leading one. So I'm going to use this second leading one to create a zero below, and then our third column will be complete and in reduced row echelon form. The operation I'm going to perform is row 3 minus row 2. Now technically our coefficient matrix is in reduced row echelon form, and we would be able to analyze our solution from here, but our augmented matrix as a whole is not in reduced row echelon form. I still have to deal with this final column so to get this into the most reduced row echelon form, we could go row 2 minus row 3. That would give us the following augmented matrix, and you can check that this final version here does satisfy all four properties of reduced row echelon form. So what I want you to do is try to write out the corresponding linear system. The first row of our augmented matrix tells us 1x minus 2y's equals to 0. The second row of our augmented matrix tells us that 1z equals to 0. And the final row tells us something rather ridiculous. It tells us that 0x's plus 0y's plus 0z's is equal to 1. Or, if we simplify, we get 0 equals to 1. And this is clearly a false statement. When we end up getting a false statement based on our reduced row echelon form augmented matrix, our conclusion is that the system has to be inconsistent. After you check that no solution is not a possibility, then you're going to go back and take a look at the number of leading ones that you have in your reduced row echelon form matrix. So what I do is I circle my leading ones, so I count the number of leading ones I have, and I also count the number of columns I have inside just the coefficient part of the augmented matrix. So here we have two leading ones, and three columns three columns of the coefficient matrix, and what we have is we have that the number of leading ones is less than the number of columns of A. And as soon as that condition is satisfied, we have an infinite solution, provided we do not have no solution. When you've determined that your linear system does have an infinite solution, my recommendation is to transfer it back into a linear system so that you can analyze it. And what we want to do is we want to match up the leading ones with what are called leading variables. So if I were to circle my leading ones in red, the first leading one matches up with the variable x. So x is called a leading variable. The second leading one matches up with the variable z, so z is also a leading variable. Notice that there is no leading one in the column for y, so y is a free variable. And that's going to be really important in the next step. After you've determined which variables are free variables, what we have to do is assign one parameter to every free variable. And I've done this in this line right here. So we knew from the last slide that y was a free variable, so I'm going to set y equal to t, and we say that t can be any value we want. So t is an element of the real numbers. t is our parameter. And then what we do is we go back to our linear system, we sub in y is equal to t, and we solve for x and z. And after we've completed this step, we can write down what our solution set looks like. So we have x is equal to 3t, y is equal to t, and we have z is equal to 0. That's based on the um, second equation over here. So let's repeat the setup for an infinite solution on an augmented matrix that is a little bit bigger than the one we just did. 
Just to make the conversation a little bit easier, I've assigned variables to each column of this augmented matrix. So I'm going to say that column 1 is x1, column 2 is x2, all the way up to this fifth column, which is x5. Of course, this sixth column over here doesn't have a variable associated to it. This sixth column represents all of the numbers on the right-hand side of the equal sign. What I see some students do is I see some students circle these last two numbers and say 1 equals to 0. Thus we have no solution. But can you see what's wrong with what I've just done here? This last row actually reads x5 equals to 0, and that's not a false mathematical statement. Now that we're more convinced that this augmented matrix doesn't lead to no solution, Let's set up that parametric solution. So the first thing that I want you to do is circle the leading ones. So we have three leading ones. How many columns of our coefficient matrix do we have left over? Well, there are two columns here that do not have leading ones. So can you determine how many parameters we're going to have in our infinite solution? I've gone ahead and I've written out the corresponding linear system for this augmented matrix. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up our leading ones with the leading variables. So this first leading one matches up with x1, this second leading one matches up with x2, and this last leading one matches up with x5. It's x3 and x4 that are free variables. Those are going to be the variables that we have to give a parameter to in our infinite solution. Since we know that x3 and x4 are free variables, we can set them equal to some parameter. So here I've decided to use s as the parameter for x3 and t as the parameter for x4. s and t are allowed to be any real value and that's what this signifies here on the right. And you can go ahead and you can make those substitutions into the linear system that we had before, and we get this. And now our goal is to solve for the leading variables x1, x2, and x5. So all I've done is I've moved these two terms over to the right-hand side to get 1 plus s minus 2t for x1. I've done the same for x2. I've moved both the s and the t over to the right-hand side to get x2 equals negative 2 minus s minus t. And there's no simplification needed for x5, it will stay as 0. So our final step here is just to write down the solution set to our linear system. So here is our solution set for our linear system. This is our infinite solution, and our linear system we could label it as consistent. So just to end off the video, I have a couple notes for you. The first note is remember that once you get to reduced or echelon form, you want to check to see if you have no solution first. The second note is if you have a solution, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to check to see if every column of the coefficient part of your matrix has a leading one. If you answer yes to this, then you end up having a unique solution and if it turns out that you have more columns than you have leading ones, then you end up having an infinite solution, and you're going to have to set up your parameters and then solve for your leading variables. And the last note I have for you is just a general equation that's going to help you out as you work through some more examples. And that is that the number of parameters plus the number of leading ones is always equal to the number of columns of the coefficient part of your augmented matrix. Alright my little epsilons, stay positive.